Hi, welcome back. This is lesson 4.6, Venn diagrams from the traditional standpoint. So in our last few lessons, we've learned about Venn diagrams, um, as well as the modern and the traditional squares of opposition um, that designate both Aristotle and Boole's perspectives and diagramming the logical relationships between categorical statements. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to move just a little bit further and introduce just one key ingredient we need for using Venn diagrams to represent the traditional standpoint. Because remember, one of the key things is that when you diagram something, um, you have to interpret it such that it only means what it actually says. Such that if you do, if you do, if you perform a Venn diagram, let's say on an A statement, in which you fill in the I guess it would be the left-hand side of those two bubbles. Um, strictly speaking, that doesn't imply existence. Because remember, um, when we fill something in, it just means that something's not there. When we put an X, that means something actually is there. Such that from the traditional perspective, Aristotle's perspective, when we say that all S or P implies that it is in fact the case that some S or P, or namely if I say that all cats are animals, it implies that some cats are animals, in order to make that movement, what I need to represent is the idea that something actually exists. And this is precisely what Boole disagrees with. But So we need a way to kind of make Venn diagrams such that they actually work from the traditional perspective. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce what's called an existential quantifier. It's basically an X with a circle around it. And we're going to place that in those regions, um, uh, in the, those universal propositions, the A and the E, in order to represent those relationships. So to make this a little bit more clear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a second video. You'll see it just below here on the lesson. And that video is going to show, actually show you the representations. Um, and basically, the reason we're doing this is just to kind of clean up our system. It's actually a fairly easy chapter, I think. And we can use those diagrams to represent those, in, represent or as it were, test those immediate inference arguments that we've talked about and we've been doing in the other chapters. Um, so, without further ado, I'll move on to that. I hope this is helping you guys. Um, again, feel free to let me know if you have a question or whatnot on the logic content here. Okay?